does adding a bowsprit to a sloop make it a cutter? Because, like, if you look at the setup, you have the mast, it's forward of the 40% line, right? I mean, you, we'd say the 40% is, eh, about here. So, the mast is forward of it. It's a sloop. If we add a bowsprit, and then we add a stay to that bowsprit, well, all of a sudden, this sucker's, like, back at the 50% line. So, does that make it a cutter? So, this question is sadly answered by yes and no. Uh, in the comments, there were some really, really insightful people that weighed in on this. One was a naval architect, another was a boat builder. And they weighed in with more things that add more confusion to it by just making it more of a gray area. So the classic definition is very clear cut. And then when you start thinking about it, you realize how vague it actually is. So the clear cut definition of a cutter is that the mast is aft of the 40% line, and that a sloop, the mast is forward of the 40% line. There's no mention of bow spritz, overhangs, waterline length, nothing. It's just that. So, uh, a boat builder weighed in and said that the 40% line does not include bow spritz and all that mess. It simply includes bow to stern. So a bow sprit would not be counted in that equation. It's simply like length on deck, pretty much. A naval architect weighed in and said that it's length of waterline. So if the bow has a huge overhang and the stern has a huge overhang, they don't count. It's just the part in the middle. That's quite insightful. The problem is that still is very vague because, you know, how is the boat loaded? I mean, you'll see some boats that look like a sloop but have a giant stern overhang. When they're sitting at anchor, at rest, you know, the waterline might be, might be this. So this boat, which obviously is a sloop, say that from my fingers aft, is all overhang, which would be an incredibly obscene overhang, but that would then make this boat a cutter, even though the mast is way far forward. So at rest, it's a cutter, it's a, yeah, it's definitely a cutter. But then when it's sailing and that overhang goes in, like, does it change then? So it's, that's gray, and then, the historical definition being very vague of just saying 40% of the boat, it doesn't mention spars. And the problem is, uh, I've seen some boats, like historical boats, that are, like, if you take away the bowsprit, it's a sloop. Like, the mast is so far forward. You have the Cornish Crabber as well. Like, their mast is so far forward. And then their bowsprit is gigantic. And they're a cutter. It's a very gray area, and sadly, I don't have a clear-cut answer for you as to whether or not this is a sloop or cutter based on spars because spars used to be gray for me because it was like well if it's just a pole that sticks out the front to hook a downwind sail to I did not count it if the down if the bowsprit stuck out and you know you had like three head sails on it because it's a tall ship I counted those Pretty much, if the bowsprit hung out and had a bob stay coming down and whisker stays coming to the side to show that this stay is a permanent part of the boat that hangs out there and does serious work, I counted that as part of the, the whole boat when I was deciding is the mast for or after the 40% line. The boat builder said that no, don't count the bowsprit, and then the naval architect said no, don't count anything that's out of the water. It's a vague area, uh, and sadly, that is, that is the answer. So what I personally do, now I'm not saying that this is correct, but then again, everyone that's looking at a boat is personally saying it's this or it's that or the other, based on some vague definitions. If the boat has actual stays, like whisker stays and bob stays, then I count it as part of the boat when I'm evaluating if it's a cutter or not. If it's just like a, a J boat with a carbon pole that can be extended to hang the spinnaker on. No, I don't count that. Even if it has a bob stay, there's no whisker stays, it's not part of it. It goes out when they want it, comes back when they don't. That's that's just me personally. But we've seen a lot of really old boats, uh, a lot of gorgeous wooden boats, and they will actually raise up their bow spray. That way they don't have to pay so much when they're on a mooring or tie up on a quay. They they make their boat smaller. So did that boat just go from cutter to sloop? You know, that, that's where it gets dicey. So I personally, if it looks like the, the, the overhangs and the spritz and everything are part of the boat and like an actual integral piece of the boat, I count it as the whole boat. So when I look at the silhouette, it's off in the sunset, 
If it looks like it's all part of the boat, then yes. And then I look where's the mast, and then I decide cutter or sloop. If it doesn't look like it's part of the boat and it's just like added on just to hold a spinnaker out there, then no, I don't count it as part of the boat. That is that, and I'm sorry that was such a vague answer, but sadly it's a really vague area and yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.